Hi folks, here is a presentation I gave at the Ontario Genealogical Society on the 5th of June 2016 about what's new in Irish records and a great big thank you to the Ontario Genealogical Society for inviting me over to speak in Toronto, which was great fun, and also to the Ireland Special Interest Group which sponsored this particular presentation. Uh, there's a variety of different sources for new Irish records, and my recommendation would be to go to Claire Santry's blog, uh, also check out John Grenham's blog, and the Irish Genealogical Research Society and Genealogical Society of Ireland uh, Facebook groups. Uh, they seem to be on the cutting edge uh, regarding what is new in Irish records. And you'll find this presentation actually on YouTube, as, as you know, you're watching it now. Um, uh, Claire's Irish Genealogy News blog gives daily updates. It is searchable, so you can uh, look through it to see what's been put there before, and it's almost real time. Uh, quite frequently, Claire will do several blogs per day. Uh, fairly short and sweet, but it gives you uh, the latest in what is new in Irish genealogy. So, for example, here is one that was put up relatively recently, uh, electoral registers available from 85 to 86 browse feature added. Uh, so that's the kind of blog that you'll get on Claire's site. And she also has the excellent Irish Genealogy Toolkit, uh, which is a toolkit for discovering your ancestors. And uh, she has recently produced a uh, booklet on new Irish genealogy records from 2011 to 2015. And you can buy that via P PayPal. Uh, highly recommended. And in fact, a lot of the information in this presentation uh, has been garnered from that particular booklet. Um, I'm focusing just really on the last two years, uh, 2015 and 2016, um, but Claire goes back to 2011. So that certainly would be worthwhile getting hold of. The Irish Genealogical Research Society has a variety of different resources available for its members, and annual membership is only 47 Canadian dollars, well worth the investment. Uh, they have a members area as well where uh, there are uh, resources available only to members of the society, and there's some very useful uh, resources there. Also, the Genealogical Society of Ireland has a lot of information about um, upcoming events and also um, special archive and research uh, facilities. So uh, do consider joining them as well. Between Genealogical Society of Ireland and the Irish Genealogical Research Society, these are the two major genealogical societies within Ireland today. John Grenham's Irish Ancestors website is also indispensable. It's got lots of uh, wonderful things for those that are looking for what is new in Irish records. It was available at uh, the Irish Times. It was hosted on the Irish Times website, but that uh, moved on the 23rd of May of this year, 2016. And um, John had an associated blog with the Irish Times for many years. And that is something that I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. But all of this has now moved over to his own personal website, www.johngrenham.com, and it's something that you should check out. So that happened earlier this year, and all of the old features that were available on the Irish Times version of the website are available on John's own personal website. And you can get some information uh, free um, usually for the first three or four hits, and then you have to pay, I think it's 4 99 per day. So um, that's not bad at all, 4 99 euro that is, so it's about $6 or so. He also has written Tracing Your Irish Ancestors, which is now in its fourth edition, and it's av available on Amazon. Um, you can get version 2 on, or at least part of version 2, on Google Books, um, but, uh, and it's also available in a Kindle version. A variety of Facebook groups which may be of interest, the Irish Genealogical Research Society, again. We also have the Genealogical Society of Ireland and John Grenham's own Facebook page as well. All of these, as well as all of the county genealogy Facebook groups, will be sources for new Irish records or um, a place where you can inquire about new Irish records. So that's Facebook. So what is new since 2014? Um, we'll be looking at civil records, church records, burials and gravestones, wills and probate, census substitutes, 
court records, military records, newspapers, emigration records, records by county and miscellaneous sources. To start off then with civil registration records, uh, which stretch from 1845 up to 1958 and um, up to the present to a limited ex extent as well. Dates of civil registration records, well, <clears throat> online, marriages stretch from 1845 up to 1958, uh, but you can get Catholic uh, marriages from 1864 onwards, births from 1864 to 1958, deaths from 1864 to 1958, um, and then if you go into the General Registry Office or the General Re Office, Registry Office of Northern Ireland in person, then you'll be able to get uh, these civil registration records up to the present day. But do be aware that 10% of people never registered, so they are incomplete and never will be complete. Um, and Family Search is the place where you can can get uh, these, these free records. And they're divided into indices and certificates. So we're going to look at the indexes first, and then we'll go and look at the certificates afterwards. Various sources for civil registration uh, indices, and some of these are new. Now these are just transcriptions only, they're not the actual indices themselves, but a family search offer them free, and they give up to 1958 for all of Ireland and uh, you can find these online, but you can also go to your local uh, Latter-day Saint Family History Centre and they should have them available for you there as well. Irishgenealogy.ie is a relatively new website, certainly within the last two years, and that has births, marriages and deaths, uh, births up to 100 years ago, marriages 75 years ago, deaths 50 years ago, and that means that the deaths on that particular website go up to 1964 whereas on Family Search they only go up to 1958. Um, but they only go up to 1922 in Northern Ireland. Ancestry is another site where you can get civil registration indices, but you have to pay for it. Um, the advantage is you can add them directly to your tree on Ancestry. Um, FindMyPast.ie is another pay site, but again only up to 1922. And RootsIreland.ie also has them, but it also is a pay website. So Family Search or um, Irish Genealogy would be your best bets. And then of course, once you have located an entry in the indices, you can then order the actual certificate based on that index entry. And there are various sources of certificates. Your local LDS Centre, Latter-day Saints Centre, the Mormons, um, has them available on microfiche or they can be ordered on microfiche. And you can either photograph the screen <coughs> or order a printout from, uh, from the actual fiche itself. The General Registry Office of Ireland is located at Werberg Street in Dublin, but there are also county registration offices, um, and I tend to use the Roscommon office quite frequently because I will email them uh, and they will send me the certificates uh, by email. Uh, also in Northern Ireland we have Groney and that's at Chichester Street in Belfast but by appointment only. So this is an example of a birth certificate photographed at my local Latter-day Saint Centre and uh, this was pretty good because what you see here is that I was looking for the, the um, the uh, birth certificate of Fanny O'Carroll, whose father was Joseph O'Carroll, my great-great-grandfather, and Maria O'Carroll, formerly Dockery, my great-great-grandmother. And I found it, and I photographed it, and then as I was transcribing it into the Excel spreadsheet, I just noticed that the name Dockery came up twice, and that the address where these two uh, babies were born was exactly the same. And Hugh Thomas, was also the name of Joseph and Maria O'Carroll's first son. So there was a lot of parallels there and it made me realize that in actual fact Sarah and Maria were sisters and I'd never heard of Sarah before and by photographing the birth certificate at the local LDS center I had inadvertently found a completely new member of my family tree. And that is not something that I would have been able to do if I'd ordered it online from the General Registry Office because they would have just sent me this one up here, just this one and nothing else. So the Latter-day Saints uh, version of the birth certificate 
allowed me to actually find a completely new member of my family tree. And that's why I do like going to the Latter-day Saints because you see the entire page of birth certificate entries rather than just the single one that you get from the registry office. Now in the Latter-day Saints Center they have a variety of different records on film. Here's the birth index from 1864 to 1958 um, and the records are available from 1864 all the way up to 1958. Um, birth certificates are available for those years there. So you can see that they're quite patchy, 1864 to 1881, and then we have a, a break up until 1900, and then it goes from 1900 to 1913, and then there's another break, and it starts again in 1930. So there are large gaps in the birth certificates. I have no idea why, but it certainly would be very, very useful if you had certificates for all of those years. Um, sadly, that is not the case. Um, the marriage index, again, 1845 to 1958, but it only has marriages from 1864 to 1870. So outside of these years, you have to go to the General Registry Office and buy the certificate for €4 Euro per certificate. So the Mormons do save us an awful lot of money by offering it to us free of charge at the local Family History Centre. Death indexes 1864 to 58, and there you see the death certificates only 1864 to 70. And then there's a variety of the rec other records that are available at your local uh, family history center, um, but it's mainly the birth, marriages, and deaths that we're dealing with here. Certificates not covered by the Latter-day Saints centers can be obtained from the General Registry Office for four euros each, um, and you need to order a photocopy of an entry in the records and not the full um, actual um, record itself which is more like 20 euro um, so do make sure that you're just getting a photocopy rather than the, rather than the full scale one and um, the general registry office is uh, this is the, the Northern Ireland one and uh, it has a very useful website which launched in April 2014 an online service and this is um, more advanced than the one in uh, Southern Ireland uh, and again you can it only covers the six counties of Antrim, Armagh, Down, Derry, Fermanagh and Tyrone. Uh, if you want to search registration you can use the following links for births, marriages and deaths and this is the sort of thing that you get. The interesting thing here is that it gives you the name of the partner and the date of the marriage which is a lot more that you, than you get um, uh, elsewhere. And uh, the search the searches are free, but you need to have a minimum credit of 40p, uh, a minimum credit rather, and it's 40p per credit. I think you need a minimum of two credits, so that means 80p. Um, certificates are one credit for an enhanced view and five credits, uh, which is two pounds for the full view with a copy of entry from the register. And again, they have birth, marriages and deaths, births up to 100 years, 75 years for marriages and 50 years for deaths. Then this is what the marriage enhanced view looks like. And you get a little bit more information. You get the place of marriage, uh, clock, Presbyterian, and you get the age at marriage of the groom and the age of marriage at the of the bride. Uh, just go back to that. Yes, and the surname of the bride being Mackay. So you do get quite a lot of information on the enhanced view. And um, in terms of civil records, the future plans, digitization, well, hopefully. It would be really, really nice to see that these records are digitized and made available online. And will the General Registry Office of Southern Ireland follow Grony in Northern Ireland by making a lot of this available digitally on their websites? We'll have to wait and see. So moving on to church records. The challenges with church records are there's a very limited supply or limited coverage of them in terms of geography and time periods. The handwriting is difficult to read. Transcription errors are common. Some of the entries are in Latin. And if your Latin is as good as mine, well, then we're both in trouble. Um, and there's limited information in these church records. Uh, births, mother's maiden name is frequently absent. Marriages frequently have no parents listed, and deaths were much more rarely reported than births and marriages. So uh, they can be very good because they go back further than civil records, but they also can be very limited as well. Also, the Irish place names that are used, there's lots of variants of these place names, lots of equivalents 
and sometimes it's very difficult to know exactly the location where these events took place. <clears throat> there are various sources of Irish church records. Roots Ireland now have uh, transcriptions and these are linked to the National Library of Ireland images and we'll talk a little bit about them. Irishgenealogy.ie also has some of these church records. The Catholic Register records became available in mid-2015 as digital images for the first time online. The trouble was there was no index, so you had to browse through them page by page of poor handwriting, um, which had deteriorated uh, significantly over the years. So they were very, very difficult to, to go through. Then uh, Find My Past and Ancestry got together and in March of 2016 they produced an index for these registers. <clears throat> maybe Family Search at some stage in the future will do the same and maybe they'll be free, which will be even better. But there's no news about that at the moment. There's various other records of Find My Past, Ancestry, Family Search. Uh, the International Genealogical Index is another uh, Family Search resource worth looking at. And there's more difficult sources then, like the uh, Church of Ireland, Anglican records, Presbyterian, Methodist, Quaker, Jewish. And a lot of these can be signposted uh, via the irishtimes.com ancestor webpage. Now, that uh, has since moved to John Grenham's website, so I would refer you to John Grenham's website to find more difficult sources uh, dealing with the non-Catholic religions. There are over 20 million church records, and this is one of the reasons why they're so useful. Um, uh, 20 million on the Irish genealogy website, and um, this is Roots Ireland, and sorry, 20 million on the on the Roots Ireland website, and uh, the problem is that it costs 28 dollars or 20 pounds or 25 euros per month. Um, this is all new. Uh, that they have this kind of payment system because it used to be on a credit basis but um, the best thing to do rather than taking out an annual subscription is just to sign up for a month and then blitz it make sure you use the website for that month that you are signed up. Now Roots Ireland does not cover Cork South, Dublin City or Kerry. So we've got Dublin City here, we've got Cork South here and we've got Kerry here. These are covered by irishgenealogy.ie. So between Roots Ireland and Irish Genealogy, you have complete coverage of the country, more or less. Uh, Cashel and Emily might be a little bit of a problem around about the Limerick, Tipperary, uh, Clare area. Roots Ireland, this is what it looks like when you sign in. And you can search for uh, a surname and you can see that the surname Spiran, spelt that particular way, has 75 instances of baptisms or births, 35 marriages, 25 burials, 23 census records, and so on. Um, you can also go to Irish Genealogy and, and click on the Search Church Records link. Um, uh, and this is all free, and this is very distinct from Roots Ireland, which is a pay, pay system. Irish Genealogy, this is the type of printout you get and the reason why I like this in particular is that you can search by sponsor. So we can actually uh, bring up these names here in the search record and this is what the record actually looks like. You can actually click uh, on a link to see the original, uh, uh, well a digital version of the original record and that's the kind of information it has. This one has got fairly nice easy to read handwriting. Now the National Library of Ireland put the Catholic parish registers up online uh, in the middle of last year, 2015, but there was no index as we've said previously, so you have to browse through page after page of poorly legible handwriting. But it has 98% coverage of the Catholic church records, but only up to the 1880s. So that differs from Roots Ireland, which will take you up to the 1900s, maybe as late as 1920 in some specific areas, but certainly it will take you up to about uh, the year 1900 in m most, if not all, parishes. Uh, parishes. Uh, so there's a little bit of a limitation on the National Library of Ireland's version in that it only goes up to 1880. 
Uh, find my paths to have produced an index for this, and this is an example of uh, where you'll find them. The trouble here is that um, you'll have to go to life events, birth, marriage, death, and then look under church registers. And you can search the church registers, first name, last name, and so on, and uh, specify where in Ireland you want to look. But it does not return known records. So I have records that I've already found via other sources, <coughs> such as Roots Ireland, but they're not turning up in the search, and I'll explain why. Um, here is an example. Here's a William Sperring, Baptism Year 1808. And um, it's a transcript from Ancestry.com. So Ancestry and Find My Past got together on this particular endeavor. The sponsors are not listed, unfortunately, in this particular print out. And that is very disappointing because it would have been nice to be able to search for the sponsors on the Find My Past and Ancestry.com indices for these National Library of Ireland Catholic Church registers. Uh, you can do it on irishgenealogy.ie, but unfortunately uh, there didn't seem to be enough imagination on the part of Find My Past and Ancestry to introduce searching by sponsors, because that would have been very, very helpful. Then you can view the image by simply clicking on the button, and this is the terrible type of image that you get. Uh, the sponsors are only discoverable from the original image. They may be brothers and sisters of the child's parents, so that's why they are worth searching for. And this is all new. Anything new is indicated by this type of green star. And there they are down there. Can you read that? No. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And you can see that even making it a little bit bigger, we have uh, William, son to William Sparing and Deborah Kelly, sponsors, John, or what does that say? Friarman, maybe, and Anne O'Donnell. So that's an example of the terrible um, writing that you find. So it's a little bit straining on the eyes. Now, <clears throat> it's worthwhile mentioning at this point, Irish naming convention. The first son was named after the father's father, second son after the mother's father, third son after the father, fourth son after the father's eldest brother, and the fifth son after the mother's eldest brother. And a similar type of naming convention for the girls as well. First daughter, mother's mother, second father's mother, third mother, and so on. Now, this wasn't followed all the time. Some families adapted the naming convention to suit their own particular individual familial needs. However, it was followed frequently, and it can provide some wonderful clues to the generation um, above the parents if you know how the parents named their children. So uh, this can be taken as useful corroborative evidence with other evidence you may find, and it will help you increase your confidence that you have actually found the correct ancestors. Here's an example. <coughs> Anne Gleeson, 1865, 13th of August. Ballon Hinchin Kilda Scully was the parish where she lived, and her spouse was John Gleeson, um, who came from County Tipperary in Ireland. Now, this is the actual digital image of the original record. And we can see John Gleeson and Anne Gleeson were married in something uh, of Patrick cause something and Bridget something. So unfortunately somebody's left the um, front of the camera up when they were taking this particular image or there's some other sort of blockage and we can't really see what that entry says. Don't. Never mind. Here's another one and this one is my great-great-grandfather Joseph Carroll of Dublin and um, Maria Dockery of Kilmore and it says here that Joseph Carroll um, was the son of, if you can make it out there, it says Thomas. And uh, Maria Dockery was the daughter of Hugo or Hugh, Hugo and something Simpson. That actually should be Joan, I know from previous experience. The trouble is, the entry has her as Maria Simpson, whereas Simpson was the maiden name of the wife's mother and not of the wife herself. This should be Maria Dockery Kilmore is actually coming out as Maria Simpson Kilmore. 
And this appears to be a systematic error in the index for both Find My Past and Ancestry. So it took me a long time to actually find this. Now, the spouse's first name is Josepha, and the spouse's last name is not entered, even though the name Carol can be really quite easily made out up there. So there are transcription errors in these indices, and I think it will be several years before they are probably corrected. Um, Hugo Simpson, or Simpon, father's last name, Simpon. Well, Hugo and Joan Simpson were the actual um, uh, entries, but in actual fact, they've used the wife's mother's maiden name instead of the um, uh, the wife's um, uh, the, yes, the wife's mother's maiden name instead of the wife's maiden name, instead of the husband's uh, name. So that's a complete mix-up there, complete mix-up. Transcription errors abound. Be careful. Tread carefully. Then uh, this is a useful source list of Irish Roman Catholic parish, parish baptism parish list um, that they have on the um, Find My Past website and you can see when the records actually stretched out to. Uh, they've also got a, a useful reference for common Latin words or phrases found in the Irish Roman Catholic baptism records. So if you were ever worried about the rustiness of your Latin, fear no more, it will be back up to par in no time at all. Moving over to ancestry, it's almost impossible to find out where the uh, Irish Catholic church registers are on Ancestry. Uh, if you go to the card catalogue and you search birth, marriages and deaths for Ireland, they don't show up at all. Um, if you go to, they have select births and baptisms, <coughs> select marriages, births and baptism registers and Catholic parish baptisms, marriage rest registers, records extraction database, but nothing about the registers. Uh, in the card catalog, which is most surprising. So in the end, I actually had to Google Catholic Parish Registers Ancestry, and that's when I got hold of the link. And this is what the front page looks like. Um, this is the actual link here, if you want to click on that or enter that into your browser. And if we enter Maria Dockery, uh, you'll see that there's no luck for Maria Dockery. We've just looked at her previously on Find My Pass. And again, the same kind of systematic error occurs here. She's down as Maria Simpson. Simpson is her mother's maiden name, not her maiden name. And um, we have Hugo Simpon, James Simpon, Toma, Josepha, Maria Simpson. So it's the same kind of problem as we've seen previously. And transcription errors still abound on the ancestry version of the same thing. Now, Moving from Catholic records to Church of Ireland or Anglican records, we have an updated list of Church of Ireland parish records uh, published relatively recently on uh, the ireland.anglican.org website and you can access them there. Uh, we also have birth, marriages and death records uh, pre-1864 on the Irish Genealogical Research Society um, website but you do need to be a member to join and to gain access to those early uh, Irish birth, marriage and death records. We also have church records from a variety of other sources, such as the uh, diocesan and prerogative marriage license bonds indexes, which go back to 1623. And there are 218,000 of those records. They're great for middle class ancestors, merchants, traders, that sort of thing. And you get a transcript plus the original image. By subscribing to find my past. This is the sort of thing that you get. Um, and I searched for uh, spearing and variance and I got 14 results. Uh, those are some of them from Cork and Ross and that's the kind of transcript that you get with these records. And you also get a uh, digital image of the original record. So in this particular instance it's actually quite easy to read handwriting which is quite a pleasure. So that's the church birth, marriage and death records. Now let's move on to burials and gravestones. And these stretch from about 1830, roughly up to about 1982. 
Uh, the trouble is, they're all over the place. There's a variety of different records, a variety of different websites. Some of them really good, um, but there is no central place where you can find burial records. Uh, here's a variety of the different ones that you uh, will find of relevance to Irish genealogical research, and it's worthwhile exploring each of those in turn. In terms of wills and probate, the uh, Find My Past website has diocesan and prerogative wills and administration, and there's 264,000 of them have been added in the last two years. We also have the National Archives of Ireland uh, calendar of wills and administrations from 1858 to 1922, and that's free. Um, and here's an example of a William Graham, and the primary beneficiary was Harriet Eleanor Graham Blake. Um, country of death or county of death, Canada, it says, and you can also see uh, the original image. And you can see it gives quite a lot of information here because it gives them uh, the date of death, 27th February 1850. Uh, the principal um, beneficiary was Harriet Eleanor Blake, um, who is otherwise known as Graham, uh, the wife of Arthur Netterville Blake. And you can see that they lived at Kilcloggan House in Chewham in the county of Galway and she was the daughter. So there's really quite a lot of information in these relatively uh, brief will summaries. In terms of census substitutes, uh, we have the tithes, we have Griffith's valuation, we have the council books, we have the directories. But what's new? Well, we have uh, census records from 1901 and 1911 already, but um, we now have, and that was, this, this particular one was taken Two, two, three years ago now, back in 2013, this slide was first made. We only had 1901, 1911, but now we have 1851, 41, 31, and 21. Only extracts, because the, uh, the census material was largely destroyed in the fire in the public record office in 1922. Uh, we only have certain uh, counties surviving that fire, and they are now on the irishgenealogy.ie website and they are free of charge. We also have census search forms from 1841 to 1851, and these can be quite useful as well. And the reason for these is because in 1908, Ireland introduced the old age pension, and overnight, people increased in age by about 10 to 12 years on average, especially if they were near the pensionable age, which is why when you're looking between the 1901 and the 1911 census, that you'll find a 20-year difference in people's age, even though there's only a 10-year difference between the two censuses. So uh, in order to double check and see if people were giving a right version of their age, the um, pension administrators checked the 1841 and 1851 censuses to see how old they were in those particular censuses and to see whether they were telling the truth about their own age. Now, a lot of people, of course, would only have guessed their age because people didn't really know their age back then. Now, we also have an enhanced search on Find My Past uh, for the census records of 1901 and 1911, and that's new in the last two years. Uh, we also have the Tide the Plotman records for 1830s, Griffith's 1850s, going into the 1990s with some of the cancelled books, and here's Griffith's valuation. Uh, this isn't particularly new, but it's a very useful website, and you can see that uh, this will give you a readout of all of the people that head heads of household in Ireland in the mid middle of the 1800s. This particular one was done in 1862 because it's in Antrim. Um, the south of the country was done first, so that would have started in 1848. Most of the country was in the 1850s, and then the northern counties were in the 1860s. And it can also give you the actual um, digital image of the original record, and it can give you a very nice map as well. So you can see that in this particular instance, Starbucks coffee in Antrim is actually quite near the site of the old fort. Um, and it's possible to overlay modern maps and um, uh, old maps just by moving the slider back and forth. And that can be very, very useful to see what was there in 1880, and what was there in 2016. 
the cancelled books are also a, a an valuable resource and probably very underutilized. And um, these have been put online for the six counties of Northern Ireland, and that's new in the last two years. These valuations were redone every two years approximately <clears throat> after the initial primary valuation done by Griffiths between 1848 and, nine, and 1862, 1864 rather. And um, you need to know the land divisions, the county, the barony, the electoral district, the union, parish, town, and uh, need to be familiar that there are several different kinds of land division. And you just need to be aware that uh, a lot of these overlapped with each other's. So um, it can be confusing. Uh, these books are colored coded so that um, uh, when they were used every two years, uh, if somebody had died, they would cross out their name in a particularly colored, particular colored ink for that year, and then they'd write in the person that took over the land above that crossed out name. So the oldest books are at the very back, and then you have to read from the back to the front. Um, so there's usually about, say, five or six cancelled books in each volume. So you'd start at the bottom, uh, that would be book number one, book number two would be on top of that, book number three on top of that, and so on. And you'd need to go to the back of the book, to the first, back of the volume to the first book, and then read forwards for book one, and then skip back to the book two, which is on top of it, and then read forwards, and then skip back again, and um, or skip forward again, rather, and um, uh, you'd be going then gradually closer and closer to the front of the volume. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, and this is an example of, of the county, the district of Rathkeel and Limerick, and it says it's from 1858 to 1929. This is what it looks like. There is a um, index here at the front, and you can see what page the parish of parish of Adair, which contains the townland of Commons, uh, is on page 36, for example. And this is the colour coding that I mentioned. It was revised in 1890 in purple ink, 1891 in slightly less purple, 93 was kind of maroon, 94 was green, 96 was red, um, and uh, 1904 was green again. So slightly different ink for each year. And this is the type of thing that you get. You see this is a mess in terms of the things being crossed out. But if you relate it back, to this color coding, you can, in most circumstances, figure out who left the land and who replaced them at particular times. Now, Prony has these available on um, online, and uh, you can actually get these for the six counties of Northern Ireland uh, online. Uh, so it's worthwhile checking that out on Prony. So moving on to court records, and there are lots of court records, and um, the Irish Petty Sessions court registers uh, produced these, uh, these were produced in the last two years, um, there's plenty of them. Uh, there's also the Ireland Dog Licence registers and the Irish Prison registers, and these are very, very useful sources of information. 22 million Petty Sessions court registers, 6 million Irish dog licences and 3 million Irish prison registers. So very wor worthwhile checking these out on Find My Past. Uh, these are the records where you find your less than illustrious ancestors. Uh, so they make for fun reading. Military records. Well, there's a variety of World War I related records that have become available in the last uh, two years with the uh, advent of the commemoration of 100 years of World War I. Um, Ireland's memorial records are available there uh, on that particular website. Um, uh, this one down here in Flanders Fields Museum. Uh, we also have the National Archives of Ireland Soldiers' Wills records. And on Ancestry, they have a service medal and award rolls. On Find My Past, they have uh, the First World War and military armed forces and conflict. And uh, the, in terms of 1916 related records, and remember the Easter Rising happened in Ireland in 1916, and it was the start of a whole new era of republicanism in um, Ireland. And a lot of this uh, part of our history is captured in the Military Archives um, website. And that has some very, very interesting stuff. 
So do check it out. And that's an example of what you can see. Now, the Bureau of Military History is also another website that has become available. Um, the Weekly Irish Times Sinn Féin Rebellion Handbook is available from Find My Past. And then in a variety of different newspapers, we have Irish News Archive, which is new-ish. Certainly in the last two years, they've made some improvements and added new records every, uh, every couple of months. So the, the database for Irish Newspaper Archive is in, increasing all the time. We also have British Newspaper Archive, which when I first looked at this about three to three years ago, there were 247 titles online. Now there are 633 and there's over 14 million pages. So it's well worthwhile looking at this as well. Uh, both the Irish News Archive and the British Newspaper Archive websites ha have some of the same newspapers, but it's always worthwhile looking uh, for the same newspaper on both websites because the optical recognition software that they've used is different between the two websites. So sometimes the Irish website picks up uh, newspaper articles that the British one has missed and vice versa. So even though you're doing exactly the same search for exactly the same newspaper on both sites, you might get slightly different results. Uh, the Irish Times website is another place where you can search the newspaper and that goes back to 1859. And another one worth looking at is Irish marriage notices in American newspapers. And this is over 2,500 wedding notices, wedding notices in American newspapers. Uh, we also have Irish death notices, 35,000 of those, and 40,000 um, uh, entries for missing friends in the Boston Pilot. And that was very, very useful for finding um, people who went over to America round about or shortly after the time of the famine. Which brings us to emigration records. And uh, previously we've had the Ellis Islands, the Castle Garden records, and the Australian transportation records available on Irish genealogy. Um, also the Irish genealogy toolkit has a particular section on emigration that uh, you might find quite helpful. Um, in terms of Canadian uh, records, we have uh, Ancestry, Find My Past, and Family Search all putting up new records this year. And um, the records by county can be accessed via Claire Santry's new book and her ongoing blog. So again, I would highly recommend that. And again, this, this uh, book that Claire brought out uh, came out earlier on this year. So well worth a look. There's a variety of miscellaneous records that are also available, um, such as the All-Island Research Observatory uh, maps of uh, population change in Ireland, and that's produced by Maynooth University. And that's very useful for looking at historical maps of various Irish counties. Uh, there's also the Land Direct and Map Geohive, which are very, very useful, and these can produce old maps which may be helpful and complementary to Griffith's valuation, the council books at the valuation office, and so on. Also new on Find My Past are Ireland National School Registers, and there are thousands of records there. The Irish Genealogical Research Society has done a lot of work on um, the Registry of Deeds Index, and that has its own particular website, and that is being added to all the time. And currently, there are over 210,000 records in that particular database. Ancestry have recently put up the Grand Lodge of Freemasons of Ireland membership registers, which uh, will be very useful for anybody who has Freemason ancestors. And that really is a brief run through what's new in Irish records uh, from a genealogical perspective. Lots of new Irish records constantly being added. More and more are online every day. Claire Santry's blog is the most comprehensive resource for seeing what is new, coupled with her recent ebook. The Catholic Parish Church registers are a major addition because they contain 20 million births, marriages, and deaths, and it's the single most important addition uh, for all of these new records over the course of the last two years. But be careful, there are lots of transcription errors and it will take a while to correct them. So what does the future hold? 
Will we get digitization of civil birth, marriage and death records? Yes, please. As soon as possible. Um, currently, it is rather expensive to have to pay four euros per record. Um, and you're not even sure that you've got the right one until you get it back. So it would be nice to have these available uh, for free. Um, perhaps the family search uh, team will be able to put these online with the limited amount that they have in their particular uh, archives, but maybe the um, General Registry Office will be able to produce them at some point in time also. Uh, digitization of revised and cancelled valuation books uh, has been done for the six northern counties of Ireland, but it would be nice if it could be done for the 26 southern counties of Ireland. And of course, more newspapers are being added all the time, and the newspapers are a wonderful way of getting the meat of the story, adding the flesh onto the bare bones of your family tree. So there we go. That is a summary of uh, what's new in Irish records. And here are a couple of links that you may find useful for doing your Irish genealogical research. Thanks very much.